Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all doing really well. On my Instagram yesterday, I asked you guys if you wanted me to make a video where I talk about tips for shopping in charity shops and also like behind the scenes information that people might not know about working in a charity shop and it was pretty unanimous for yes. It was 40, 47 people saying yes and four people saying no. And if you've never done a poll on Instagram, you might not know, but you can see who says yes and who says no. So I know the four people that said no. <laughs> I don't mind. It's preference. It's preferred taste, isn't it? So if you didn't want me to make this video, that's fine. You don't have to watch it. I don't mind. But just so you know, guys, Instagram is the place that I tend to ask my viewers' opinions on videos and things like that. So if you're not following, then you should be. It's always linked in the description of my videos. My Instagram is private, but I will accept um, any viewers of my videos. So feel free to DM me. Can you DM people you don't follow? I'm not sure. But uh, feel free to DM me if you can do that and say I watch your videos and I will always accept people that watch my videos. I'm a little bit wary of people that don't have any pictures or anything on their profile though because I get scared. So <laughs> just bear that in mind maybe. So I actually filmed this video in 2014 but it's private now. Um, I privated it, private, made it private a couple of years ago I think because I was really paranoid that like... Um, people that worked for the charity that I worked for would see it and I was like drinking a beer in that video. I'm on the tea right now though. <laughs> I made it private so I've got a lot of the information from that video in here because I didn't want to make, I didn't want to miss anything especially since I haven't worked in a charity shop for, um, it was my last day in the shop last June so I haven't worked in the, in the charity shop since last June. So not everything's like fresh in my memory, so I had to go back and watch that video, nick some points from that, and then create some other points as well. So I'll give you a little bit of background about my what it was like working in the shop, or like what I did in the shop. So I know a lot of you guys will know some of this stuff already, but if there's anyone new here, this is for you. So I volunteered in a charity shop, but I never, I've never named the charity that it was, it's just preferred pe preference. Um, I volunteered there for one year and then after, when it had been about a year I was asked if I wanted to go on an interview for a part-time sales assistant position which I did and I was accepted. I then went on to work there for a further three and a half years which totaled overall in the shop to four and a half years experience working in a charity shop so I've seen it all. My jobs included sorting donations, pricing stock, rotating stock, I'll get to that in a little bit, answering the phone, booking collections in, serving customers on the till, cashing up, banking the daily takings, stock takes, window dressing, to name just a few things. You are, it. you just do everything, to be honest. There was hardly anything I did that the manager or assistant manager didn't do, apart from some more admin sides to it. But I did do a lot of things on the computer and things like that as well. Things you wouldn't expect that happen in a charity shop. <laughs> and I just want to point out that anything that I say is what I've learned from the experience of the cha one charity shop I worked in. I would imagine a lot of them are run very differently, but I would also imagine that a lot of them have very similar ways that they're run so just bear that in mind. If I start with the tips for shopping in a charity shop first and then I will get on to the other things you might not have known section. These aren't really in any particular order but here we go. So tip number one is to make a day when you when you want to go out charity shopping charity shop shopping <laughs> I wish we could I wish the term thrifting was more acceptable in this country it's just less of a mouthful Maybe I should try using it. If you want to go out for a day thrifting, um, you want to make a day of it. You don't want to be like, yeah, I'm going to pop down the charity shops for an hour and I'll be back later because that way you're not going to get the best stuff. You want to be in a charity shop. If it's a big one, like with quite a lot to see, you want to be in there for at least 10 minutes just browsing, I think anyway, because you've got to have a really good rummage to find some really good things. Tip number two. If you have a little bit of confidence, I wouldn't be able to do this, but if you're a bit more confident, you can ask your 
the, lo the people in your local charity shops when they do their stock rotation and rotation is when you look at the date on an item because every item that goes out on the shop floor has a date on it and when you do stock rotation you're looking at the date and you're looking for anything that has been on the shop floor for two weeks or longer and those things come off and you bring in new stock now new stock is also brought in every day in most charity shops it's always being filled up you're supposed to be filled to capacity um, I can't remember how many items it was you'd need to have on a one meter rail but it, it needed to be filled to capacity and this was like for the standard of the shop so if you ask when the shop does their stock rotation and if they tell you I mean they might not want to tell you I don't really know um, but say they say that they rotate all their clothing on a Monday then you know if you come in on Monday it's going to be all the loads of new stock that you haven't seen before no one else has seen before and you get first picks my next tip I'm not going to number them anymore because I haven't numbered them in my list and I'll just forget so my next tip is to check both genders so shop in a unisex way um, for several reasons really. One, I find a lot of great t-shirts in the men's section. I recently got a cool Adidas t-shirt, I've got really cool band t-shirts in the past, so definitely check if you're into oversized t-shirts and things like that. But also because a lot of the time, a lot of these garments can be labelled incorrectly, put in the wrong sections, etc, etc. I can't tell you how often I go into charity shops and I see <laughs> top man <laughs> hanging in the women's section you just think that there's a clue in the name there top man but I mean it's not the end of the world but yeah definitely check both genders because you never know what's going to be hung wrong I find any because very occasionally you get women's jeans that are button up as opposed to zip so I always see them in the men's section because a lot of volunteers in charity shops are elderly and they don't know they might not know that it's now fashionable to have button-up jeans for women, you know what I mean? Like, um, it's just easy mistakes like that. My next tip is if you're looking for something really niche or just something in particular, don't be afraid to, one, ask the staff or volunteers if they have it, and two, give them your details and they might give you a ring if they ever get it. For example, we had people in the past say, um, just I can't think of what they wanted but just say they wanted um, Guinness Book of World Records books which we do actually always have so that's a really bad example uh, what's something niche they might want <laughs> okay they want a green Denby teapot from 1985 um, you would say no I don't actually have a green Denby teapot from 1985 but um, if you give us your details we'll just pin it up on the wall and we'll give you a ring if we ever get one and we did do that a couple of times over a few times i would find something in a bag of donations and be like oh my god so and so asked me if i had this like two months ago and it does happen and it's worth a try especially if it's something really unusual that you're after i do want to also say that a lot of staff and volunteers might not put it up on the wall they might just throw it in the bin you know it's it's just people isn't it it depends if it's a per person that's willing to help you for example i can say this now because i don't work there anymore but if someone wanted me to go if i was like having a really really stressed out day and i had to be here there and everywhere running around doing everything and then all of a sudden a customer's like excuse me do you have a red mini dress in a size seven in a size eight and i'd be like no i'm really sorry we don't have anything like that at the moment even though we might have done but it's just such a niche thing i might i just might not have been in the mood to go get it and i will just honestly say that now and um, there were times where i didn't do my job to my full potential but sometimes you have very testing days um but nine times out of ten i was more than happy to help people which also similarly is don't be afraid to ask the staff or volunteers for something because we also don't put everything out for example my shop never used to put men's ties out but i thought guys are always going to want ties um i eventually did get them to start putting them out and they sold but it sometimes we keep things because we know people will ask for them but they don't necessarily go out on the shop floor if you know what i'm saying Next tip is to make your face known and build a rapport with your local charity shops. There are customers 
that would come in and I know that they would be known in every charity shop like we know them by name we know what kind of things they like to buy we know their life story but if you are building a rapport and the staff know what you're into they might I'm just this is a big might this is just something we sometimes would do in my shop is they might save things for you for example there was a lady that would come in and always buy perfume and just really nice little smelly bits so we would sometimes save perfume for her when she came in because she would be in once twice a week so we would often save things for her because we knew she would buy them my next tip is to always check the size on the garment um, and don't always trust the cube that's on the hanger or what's been written on the label because everybody makes mistakes. This was like a, a massive quote we had in my shop was everybody makes mistakes because so often things would be hung on the wrong hangers with the wrong labels etc and there's nothing more annoying than getting home and thinking that you're you've just bought a really nice size 12 top and it's actually a size 8 and you can't get it on and then you've got to return it and then you feel bad because you're returning something to a charity shop yada 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 always check the label if the label at the back of the garment has been cut off a lot of the time the size will be on the washing label which is usually on the right hand side of a garment I mean it does differ this doesn't have a label in there but it's usually on the right hand side of a garment just fold up the t-shirt have a look and it usually has the uh, size in there my next tip is to not judge a book by its cover you may notice that a lot of charity shops nowadays have a more boutique vibe they're very very different to what we, we might know as a charity shop from like the 90s which like are filled with granny's things <laughs> smell really bad and are just not a nice place to be but why i say is to be open-minded is because there are still charity shops like that where you walk in and you're like <laughs> hmm this smells like an old school charity shop it looks like an old school charity shop I'm not gonna find anything in here that I want no it's not always the case they might look a bit grimy and rough around the edges but a lot of the time there's some pretty good gems in there I remember going in one in a local charity shop and you just look at it and go wow you don't have a lot of input from your head office do you because like where I work um, there was always people from head office, area managers and stuff coming down, making sure everything's tip top. And then you walk into some charity shops and you're just like, well, they just pretty much just leave you on your own, don't they? But this particular charity shop, it had just some really strange things that you just go, I wouldn't have thought this would be in here. Like, I think there was like a YSL shirt, which all, you always find YSL shirts in charity shops, by the way, in the men's section. It's don't know why they're really common and something that caught my eye was a stack about this big of vintage vogue magazines and i was like oh my god i want that so bad but i had to restrain myself because i had so many magazines at the time um i think they wanted like a pound for them and i was like are you kidding me <laughs> i wanted them really badly but yeah don't judge a book by its cover you might find a little gem in one of these tacky little shops Sticking in theme with like a uh, location and stuff and the appearance is that location can be key to finding um, good brands but not necessarily good bargains for example I've been into some charity shops that have just been like off I can't remember if it was the Kings Road or the Fulham Road in uh, like the Chelsea area and they had a Zara so Zara you know Zara is high street a Zara top that had a massive stain on it for eight pounds eight quid like you don't know if that stain's going to come out and they wanted eight quid for it we wouldn't have even sold that in my shop that would have gone straight in the rag bin you know what i mean like we in my shop we had really high standards no stains no uh holes no nothing if we wanted to let something go because it had a small stain on it we would disclose that in the comment section on the tag um so yeah while you might find really good brands in these like london charity shops and stuff it might not be as good a value for money they really do try and rip you off up there and um it might be worth like if you wanted to like make a day of it, it might be worth going to like 
not the big cities but just the nice little areas i find like um nice quaint little seaside towns often have really nice things in charity shops so it's worth bearing in mind but also where i live which is quite a rundown and poor area on the most part um you also have like these little estates that come off places and that's where the money is and these people are still donating into the poor shops so you do still also get like we would we would still get Ted Baker we would still get Zara which like I said is high street but still a little bit dearer we were still getting nice brands in my next tip is to buy gifts for people you might think that you're gonna like a cheapskate but they needn't even know for the most part I remember doing a really nice little hamper for my mum once with like DVDs, books and stuff in, um, which were all from the charity shop. I also put like chocolate and stuff in there, but obviously it wasn't second hand. We also get, we also get um, unwanted Christmas presents, sometimes still even wrapped up, which was always really nice. Like a few days after Christmas, you'd be like, oh, it's Christmas again. Um, so yeah, we often, it's a really good time to go to charity shops is like, a week after Christmas you're gonna get some unwanted Christmas presents but we would constantly be getting um, Ted Baker gift sets, Soap and Glory gift sets all still new in their packaging and um, that's a really good thing to buy for presents is even if you're just putting them away for Christmas or something providing they're still you know in date and everything. My next tip is more personal preference and it's just something I do and that is I don't buy um, really really cheap brands from charity shops such as Primark, Pep & Co. Um, th those are the two ones that I mainly stay away from just because it's not really worth it. You could just buy it new for example. I went into Pep & Co yesterday and they are selling jeggings for £5. I then went into a charity shop they were selling the same jeggings for £3. So you know spend an extra £2 you get the new pair. My next tip is also an opinion and that is don't bother looking for shoes. Um, I worked in a charity shop for four and a half years and I didn't buy that many pairs of shoes compared to, com compared to the quantity of clothes I bought. Our most common shoe sizes in women's shoes that we had donated were either a size 3 or a size 8. So, you know, that and that, like, it was a massive difference. Um, I think if you're in a charity shop and a pair of shoes do catch your eye, fair enough see what size they are but nine times out of ten they're not going to be your size it's not like clothes where you can squeeze into it or you don't mind if it's a bit baggy like your shoe size is your shoe size you might be able to go up half the size or something with an insole but it doesn't really work the same if you've got the time and want to have a rummage why not but i never ever see nice shoes out to be honest especially in my size it just doesn't happen for me next tip is to try stuff on if you have the time it just makes life easier it can be really gutting when you get refunds because you you can do a thing called an x read and it's a receipt that prints out and tells you how much you've made so far during the day and you're like yes we've just made like this much money and then suddenly someone comes in who didn't try on their 50 pound haul of clothes that they bought and they're like none of it fitted me can i get a refund please and you're like oh that's going to take 50 quid off today's takings that we were really happy about because we just made target great um so yeah it can get a little bit frustrating having to do refunds but obviously it is your right as the consumer to have a refund so that's fine we also do exchanges in most charity shops as well a lot of people don't think you can refund or exchange goods with a charity shop but you totally can it's totally a thing that happens it can also be a little tedious sometimes if you want to get a refund because a lot of the time only specific members of staff are trained to do refunds so if it's a volunteer on the till and maybe there's only one member of staff there they then have to go get the person and they might be upstairs and it could just be a palaver but you know you do you if you've not got time to try things on i won't hold it against you i never try things on in charity shops to be honest but i also never return things to charity shops can't be bothered to do it my last tip for shopping in charity shops is um, not going to be for everyone because it involves giving your time and volunteering which for me um, all of my best charity shop finds are from the charity shop I worked in because 
it's fairly obvious you do get first pick of everything and I know a lot of people say I've read it a lot online actually people say people that work in charity shops don't get first pick but um, you obviously do because you are sorting through the stock and um, I would actually have a lot of customers say to me like I like your top I bet you got it in here because you get all the first picks and I'd be like well I do volunteer you know 35 hours a week of my life so leave me alone please so that is really the best way to find the best stuff is to volunteer and you don't even have to do that many hours you can do two hours a day two hours a week um there is often actually a min where i worked you had to do a minimum of four hours a day i think just because it's not worth the time to teach you how to do things and things like that but yeah those are my tips and now I'm going to get on to the section of other things you might not have known about working in a charity shop. Number one, theft is incredible in charity shops. You will not believe how much stuff we have stolen. My very first day in the charity shop when I did a taster hour, the police turned up twice <laughs> about theft. We ended up even having a radio where you could contact the police that would patrol the high street. You know, it got pretty bad. Um, the next thing is rags. When charity shops can't sell clothing or shoes, they put it into bags, weigh it, and then a rag merchant comes and gives them X amount of money per kilo for the rags. And then that's those clothes and shoes then go and get um, cleaned up a bit, you know, sorted out again if they're really not usable and then they get cleaned up and then they go to I think predominantly Africa but I think our, sh our shoes might have gone to Poland but I can't remember if that was true or not but it sort of rang a bell in my head. When you're clearing out your clothes and you think you're, you've got a bin pile and a charity pile, you don't need a bin pile, just put them the things that you think a charity shop wouldn't want, just put them into a carrier bag, write rags on it, and they'll be very grateful for that because it all still makes money for the charity. And it's really nice to have them labelled as well because it means you're not picking people's dirty socks, dirty underwear, which, trust me, I have seen too many pairs of soiled underwear in my existence in, in a charity shop just yeah pretty much everything that um, charity shops can't sell or haven't sold um, they do end up having a purpose somewhere along the line we had um, a company that would come and collect all of the books that we couldn't sell or can't or didn't sell um, same with DVD same with bric-a-brac anything pretty much if you are donating things to a local charity shop, please don't leave them outside the front door or the back door if you know how to get to the back entrance of the shop because people will go rifle through it. Like if you're doing this when the shop is not open, people will just rip it apart, take everything out. I can't tell you how many times me and the assistant manager would pull up to the back of the shop and people have gone through our bins, they've gone through donations that have been left and there is just everything everywhere. We'd even have people, you know, take a crap on our back doorstep. It was just horrendous. I can't even begin to explain. So just never leave donations outside. You know, it wouldn't, it's not gonna put too much out of your day to put it back in your car and come back later when uh, the shop is open or you can even give most charity shops a phone call and they will actually collect it from your house free of charge. So that's good as well. Now you will not believe the things people will donate to you. Maybe you can, maybe you have a good imagination. Here's just a short list of the weird shit I'd, I've seen being donated to a charity shop. Like I said before, red and brown stained underwear, sex toys, food, someone's actual human ashes, the dirtiest, grossest, pots and pans you've ever seen in your life. Family photo albums, full on albums with pictures of their loved ones in. Why? Use nappies, use tampons, use sanitary towels. Those are just some of the things I've seen. A colleague of mine actually had a dead animal in a bag as well, and I'm not gonna say what the animal was, but that was something that happened to her. Um, the next thing is 
um, a lot of stock that we can't sell we actually send to neighboring shops to see if they can sell and they usually like knock money off our original price to see if it can sell in their shop another thing is that most charity shops nowadays are run like any other clothing shop is they just run like a business weekly targets to meet we have audits we have stock takes we have um, visits from head office to make sure we're performing correctly etc etc it isn't uh, you might think working in a charity shop is like a really low stress job but it's it would just be like working in any other retail really next thing is a lot of people think that volunteers get things for free which is not the case I mean it could be in some shops but in my sh shop specifically um, staff and volunteers had a 25% discount on anything that they bought other than new goods which also brings me on to new goods which is sometimes you might go into charity shops and see new things and be like why is the shop selling new things like and we've even had people I even have people say to me like why are you selling new things this is a second hand charity shop and it's just like we are sent these things from head office to sell leave me alone like we are told so much about what to do from high above you know um we are told what prices to do them how to display them we are sent pictures of how they are to look on the shelves so none of that is down to us but here's a quick tip they all often go down say it's um, a mother's day gift um christmas gifts they usually go down in price the day after the event happened so i mean they did in my shop a lot of the time this video is super long by the way, I'm so sorry. The next thing is pricing guides. Similarly to uh, what I just said about new goods, is that, is that we have, I, by the way, I'm aware I keep saying we, and I know I don't work in the charity shop anymore, but it still feels like a very we thing. Um, you have a pricing guide, which is, it says like tops, t-shirt, you know, blouses and skirts, t-shirts, dresses, etc, etc. And then like a quality guide, high quality, low quality, etc. And it guides you on what, so basically there's usually a list of what are low quality items and what are high quality items. And you have to judge what the price is going by the price guide. So like, also the pricing system in my shop we couldn't just make up any old price like it had to be 99p, 125, 149, 175, 199 like you couldn't do random prices um, unless you were doing half prices um, so yeah you have guides and a lot of the time people from head office would come down and they wouldn't be happy with your pricing they want you to up those prices and you'd be like this is a top from New Look, it's not worth £8 and they'd be like, well in our shop in somewhere really posh they sell for £8 and it's like that's because it's somewhere really posh. It's a very, it's a constant battle you have with those people. But yeah, price guides, uh, you don't get to make up your own prices. Next thing is that it's really, really physically hard work. Um, when going back to the rags, the rags, oh my god so you throw the rags into a bag which is in a basket when the ba bag is full you take it out the basket you weigh it and then you stack it the rags can you can have over i don't know 150 sacks of rags a week or so I'm not really sure i can't really think but these bags of rags would be stacked to the almost to the ceiling so you would be lifting on your shoulder a bag of rags that can weigh at a minimum the lightest bag six kilos to a maximum of I think the heaviest one I ever had was probably at 14 kilos so if you're doing a day where you are just sorting donations weighing rags so many times you are lifting 14 kilos up it's really hard work and often you'll be carrying bags not quite as heavy as that probably about 10 kilos up and down the stairs it's physically very very demanding and if you are someone like me who is a younger person working there among many other people that are in their 60s 70s you will be doing a lot of the hard graft because you are more 
you are apparently more physically able to do it. I'm actually not that physically, by the end of it I wasn't that physically able to do it because um, doing the job just gave me a really bad back, it totally screwed my back up, so yeah. Um, next thing is a statistic I've sort of made up in my head but I would, this is a personal opinion, I think what I think. So I personally think in the shop I worked in, and it's probably the same like this in a lot of shops, 70% of the things that are donated we can't sell for reasons of you're not allowed to sell it legally, um, it's not good condition to sell, it's not worth selling, no one would want to buy it. 70% I would say. I would say 20% of things we will begrudgingly sell. So things that you think, oh, I probably won't sell, but we haven't got anything else, so we need to fill this space up because we've been told we have to be filled to capacity. <laughs> and then I would say 10% of things are things that we are excited to sell. Things that you're like, oh my god, yes, this is going to sell, this is going to be so good, and we're going to get quite a bit of money for it, and yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's a really small percentage of things that get you excited, to be honest. <laughs> the thing is that a lot of charity shops are now on eBay. We, uh, I was in charge of eBay when I worked there, so anything that people thought would be worth a little bit more money, I would go onto eBay, see what they are selling for, and then I would input it onto my charity's eBay system, pack it all up into a tote box, and then it got sent to our eBay 8 HQ, and then they would put it on eBay for an auction and then eventually the money from that comes back to our shop for our takings. So yeah, if you want to check out charity shops on eBay, just type in charity shops eBay and things will probably come up. I'm sure loads of charity shops have got eBay websites. And the last thing is gift aid. A lot of people don't know what gift aid is. And um, if you've ever done anything to a charity shop, there's a strong possibility that you have been asked if you are a gift aider or if you would like to gift aid. So many people, when you ask this, they don't know what it is, so they just say no because they don't want to be, you know, they just want to get on with their day. Uh, gift aid is where, when an item sells, if the person has signed up for gift aid, the government will give back 25% profit so for every pound you get 25 pence back from the government you can only sign up to the gift aid scheme if you pay tax I've never paid tax I've never earned enough to pay tax which is very sad um, so I've never been able to sign up for gift aid however I've signed many many other people up for gift aid which means their donations have created even more money for charity which is great so if you are a taxpayer and you do donate to charity shops and they ask you to gift aid it takes five minutes to fill out the form it's no hassle to you they'll even send you emails or letters to let you know how much money you have raised for the charity that is everything i don't remember the last time i talked this much my mouth is very dry i'm really sorry if this video was really long and rambly but i had a lot of points to get through and i've probably even missed loads of other points as well if there's anything you guys want to know and haven't answered it feel free to ask in the comments and i will of course get back to you as best as i can i just want to end this video by saying that working in a charity shop was amazing it had its highs and its lows as any job would but without doing that i wouldn't be the person that i am today it helped me when i was um in a it helped me when I was in a bad place mentally because I was borderline agoraphobic really by the point that I decided to go and volunteer because I was just not leaving the house at all so it really helped me it was a really good thing to do I would recommend it to anyone to just give it a go because you meet you you so you you socialize with people that you wouldn't normally in other situations like what other time am I going to be talking to people in their 60s and 70s that, that I'm not related to you hear some really great stories you see some really cool stuff it's just it can be a really nice environment to work in well, that's the end of the video guys I really hope you liked it please give the video a thumbs up if you did like it subscribe if you're new here and I'll see you very soon bye